How's it going everybody? Today I've got Renogy's new Shadow Flux panels and we're going to test these out today. So let's get this out of the box and see what we think. Ooh, that's a pretty nice looking panel. This is Renogy's 200 watt Shadow Flux panel. Now, from what I can tell, they look like they're really well built. It's a nice construction. I love this black trim, looks really good. It's just a great looking panel overall. These 200 watt panels are supposed to be 7% smaller and 10% lighter, which is really nice. It's got an IP67 rating, so that means it's waterproofed and dust proofed and, and it should hold up a lot longer to snow, sleet, rain, hopefully a nice long lifespan to this panel. But the other thing, and the thing that I'm more interested in personally, is the fact that they use these type N grade A solar cells in them and they're supposed to get 25% efficiency. And a normal solar cell, from what I read online, average is between 18 and 24% efficiency. So if this gets 25% efficiency, that's actually above the highest average panel. But honestly, the main thing I'm interested in is the shadow portion of this. These, these cells are supposed to hold up better to shaded areas. They're supposed to put out more power than a normal panel would in the shade, and they're also supposed to last longer in the shade. Something that I actually didn't know when I was getting into solar is that shadows create hot spots. And the reason that is, is it raises the resistance in the conductors and that resistance creates heat. And that over time can damage the panel and shorten lifespan. These are actually supposed to be more tolerant to that. They're, they're not supposed to be prone to having hot spots. So for a camper, this would be perfect because if I'm camping, I like to be camped in the shade and that's why I got these originally. But then I thought about my cabin. Those panels never have a full day of sun. There's always some kind of shadow on them. I'd like my cabin power source to last a little longer. So I'm gonna put these panels in place at the cabin, swap them out. But before we do that, Let's get them in some full sun. Let's test them, see what kind of voltage they're putting out. And then we'll compare them to another panel. Then we'll shade this one, we'll shade that one, see how it stacks up against a normal panel. So I really needed something to compare the Shadow Flux panel to. I'm gonna test the voltage, see what it's putting out, shade the two panels, and see how it performs compared to the other one. Anyways, they're not an apples to apples comparison. We're gonna be testing the percentage of the output because this one, has an open circuit voltage of 36.5 volts. And this one, it's still 200 watt panel and it is a little bit bigger, but it has an open circuit voltage of 23.9. I wrote those down over here so I don't forget them. This is a Renogy panel too. It's flexible, so this would be really good if you had a curved surface you wanted to put it on. It's nice construction, but it is a lot bigger. So I may have to shade a little bit more of this panel than that panel to make the comparison even. So anyways, let's test them out. Let's see what kind of voltage we get out of them. Right now, it's just slightly afternoon. These panels are pointing due south and the sun is actually a little over that way. So it's not perfectly direct sun, but it's really close. First, we're gonna test the shadow flux panel. 36.2 volts. Now we're gonna test this flexible panel. 22.6 volts. I'll see if I can shade these equally. Like I say, this panel is a little bigger. So if I cover a little more of that panel, it's probably makes it kind of fair. I could probably move this just a little bit, give it a little more sun. That might make it slightly more even right about there, I think. That's probably pretty even. All right, we'll start it off with this one because it's right here. So this in the shade has dropped to 21.7 volts. All right, let's test the shadow flux panel. See what it's dropped. It's at 35.8, so that only dropped 0.4 volts. So here you can see the numbers. That's its max voltage. That's that's max voltage. Started off 36.2, went to 35.8 with the shade, so it dropped 0.4 volts. This one over here, 22.6 down to 21.7, so it dropped 0.9 volts. So the shadow flux is definitely performing better. Before we install the solar panels, I just wanna talk about this battery really quick. This is Renogy's 300 amp hour core mini battery. A normal 300 amp hour battery, I would assume is somewhere 
in this size range. I have a 200 amp hour and it's gotta be about that big, maybe about that tall. But anyways, this is very compact and very light for 300 amp hours. It's basically three or more times the capacity of this little lead acid battery for an extra 14 pounds. This weighs around 55 pounds. This weighs around 41 pounds. This thing's 3,840 watt hours. And I'm gonna need those watt hours because my next project is installing a 12 volt DC rooftop air conditioner on my camper. Although this has done all right with small things, I'm pretty positive this will not be able to run that air conditioner for any length of time where this should do a pretty good job. And then I'm gonna have to have a charge controller. So the charge controller I'm using is this 30 amp MPPT charge controller from Renogy. It's the Rover. I think this will do a good job. My other ones have. And as far as the panels go, I think I'm gonna put those flexible panels on the roof. I was gonna use the shadow flux panels, but my cabin needs them more than the camper does. So if you wanna see how this battery performs, subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for the next video on the air conditioner. It'll be in that. But for now, let's pack up the tools. We'll head to the cabin and install those shadow flux panels. So these are the panels I'm gonna switch out. I'm gonna put the shadow flux panels in place of the, the 100 watt panels. These panels are taller, but you can see I can mount one mount off the top, then one off the side down here, and it should hit both boards on my rack. So let's get started. First thing I need to do, unhook these panels. I'm just gonna unhook them right at the fuse. I almost forgot to mention, Renogy plans to pick two top comments from this video. So tell them what you like about them, or if you have experience with these panels, share that, and you might win one. Yeah, when you really look at this, this is, I mean, obviously it's bigger, but it's not twice the size. That's 21 by 42. And this is 49 and three quarters by 30. I had to do the math to find out that is 1.7 times the size of the 100 watt panel. That looks pretty good. One thing that's noticeable right off the bat, this is still 400 watts of panels, but it's a lot lighter to set that up than having four of the 100 watt panels. So now I just need to hook it up. I'm gonna run these in series. So I've got negative here, positive to negative. Go check out the charge controller. Well, you can see it's charging again. So it's been about 15 minutes. And you can see it's brought it from 13.9 up to 14.2. So charging pretty good. So I have one more test I want to do on this. I want to use the Renogy One Core. It actually tells you more than what a charge controller would tell you. It tells you the voltage output, the wattage, the amperage, tells you where your battery's sitting. So it's gonna give us a lot better idea of what these solar panels are producing. So I brought one panel back from the cabin to test here. And honestly, I should have done this two weeks ago because two weeks ago we had crystal clear blue skies, just beautiful conditions to get the optimum output. Now we have all the smoke blowing down from Canada, from the Canadian wildfires, there's I believe like 1.7 million acres on fire up there. So all that smoke is blowing down, crossing the state. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but all the ground's got this orangish color to it. The lighting is really dim. The grass has a different look to it. You could smell the smoke in the air occasionally. I mean, honestly, I know this is gonna affect the output of the panels because it's definitely making the lighting look a lot different. So you know it's gonna be blocking out a lot of those rays. 
I threw this shot in just to demonstrate how much brighter and clearer the sky was two weeks ago. Those fires have really dimmed the sun down a lot. But we'll do the best we can. We'll get a reading. It's pretty much optimum time of day. It's like 1230 right now, I think. Let's get a reading and we'll do the best we can with what we've got. All right, this is the Renogy One Core. This is what we're going to get the readings from today. So this will give you a lot more information. 165 watts, even with that horrible lighting from the wildfire smoke. We got 29.7 volts, 5.52 amps. This is all from the solar panel and 165 watts. So that's doing pretty darn good. Power generation, 3.5 kilowatt hours. This SOC is what the charge controller says the battery's at, 100%. Battery charging volts, 13.6. Battery charging amps, 11.66 amps. So even with that bad lighting, this thing's doing really good. 166 watts out of one panel that is working in terrible light. I can't complain about that. This smoke's gonna be around for two or three weeks by the looks of it. I think I'm gonna go back and reinstall my panel. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you real soon.